Hi, this is an introduction to PEP 320, which is the course Assessment in Physical Education. I'm Dr. Chad Kish. I'm going to be your instructor for this course. This video lecture is part one of module one, which was actually day one of class on Tuesday. If you happen to miss day one of class, uh, you should uh, view this video as a lecture and take some notes and pay attention. You'll be responsible for this material. If you uh, need a review, uh, if you didn't take good notes or feel like you might have missed something in class on Tuesday, I would watch this video. If you feel like you grasp everything and you're really comfortable, you could skip to Module 1, Part 2 of the video that's going to explain all the activities uh, and assignments for Module 1. All right, we'll get going. Uh, I want to give you your instructor introduction. My name is Dr. Chad Kish. My office is in Jason Hall. 214B. I know we're not in Jason Hall right now uh, for this class, but uh, my office hours are pretty much virtual uh, this semester. You might catch me before or after class. Uh, if you have an, a question, I'll, I'll be here a little bit early or stay a few minutes afterwards. Uh, but otherwise, I will post some office hours uh, on Canvas on the announcement feature. It'll be virtual uh, due to uh, safe protocols. Uh, we can set up a Zoom meeting, we can email back and forth some specifics or even get on the phone, but we'll, uh, we'll help you out uh, the best way we can. Uh, it's my fourth year here at Lincoln University, and my background and experience is very diverse. Uh, I started out as a uh, teacher and coach, um, started coaching basketball and baseball, taught physical education uh, and health K-12. through uh, I moved on to the college coaching ranks, coached college basketball. I was a sports information director at a, uh, a college, uh, as well as doing a variety of other duties. I uh, started uh, course instruction uh, at the college level and running a fitness center uh, as well. Uh, after that, I moved on to some leadership roles as an athletic director uh, at a variety of local high schools uh, in Missouri, uh, in the St. Louis area. So education-wise, I have uh, two bachelor's degrees. The first one was in uh, sports management uh, emphasis. The second one was in physical education. I moved on and uh, obtained two master's degrees. One's in physical education. The other one is in educational leadership, which qualified me to be a building principal. Uh, and then I earned a specialist degree and a doctorate degree in educational leadership. So hopefully uh, I can share some of my backgrounds from the high school, college level, inside the classroom, outside the classroom, and coaching. Uh, how you would do a variety of assessments and even in leading a uh, organization or institution. So today's information, what are we going to do? Uh, I'm going to explain the textbook and make sure you uh, know the textbook. It is required. You should try to obtain that. That's your first activity. We'll briefly go over the syllabus. Make sure you download that and read that. A lot of information is in there uh, to get you through the course. I'll briefly discuss the course outline. Uh, everybody wants to know what are we going to do in this class. That's the course outline. Uh, we'll just briefly touch on the major assignment so you have an idea what you're going to have to do in this class. That's the other big question on the first day of class. What do I have to do? I'll show you how to navigate Canvas because this class is going to be in more of a uh, hybrid format. Um, so I'll show you where things are going to be on uh, Canvas. And we are going to discuss what a hybrid format looks like in this class. Uh, We'll meet most of the time on uh, Tuesdays, sometimes on Thursdays, depending on our activities, and we will do some uh, information online. So uh, about once a week, we'll probably meet in the traditional face-to-face -face format, and uh, about once a week, we will we'll do uh, activities online. Uh, remember, when we don't meet in class, you're still responsible for that time frame. So if we were to have an hour and 15-minute class, consider watching a, a video lecture, doing an activity, reading. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be required to kind of use that time as well. So what is the required textbook? Uh, it is performance-based assessment for middle and high school physical education. It's the third edition, and it is uh, published by Human Kinetics, written by London Kirk. It's a newer textbook, published 2020. It's actually been out for a year. Uh, the ISBN is right here. It's available at the Lincoln University Bookstore or you can uh, get the, uh, through uh, external vendors, you could possibly get an e-text through Human Kinetics. And the textbook is required. If you do not obtain the textbook, uh, very limited chance for success in this course. So the textbook's required. There are no excuses on that. Uh, you won't do well without the textbook. If you don't obtain the textbook, um, you probably need to get out of the class. Textbook is required. 
All right, so make sure you obtain that textbook. That's going to be basically your first activity. Uh, let's start here with the syllabus review. Actually, let's start and introduce the course. Why this course? What is the actual purpose of this PEP 320 assessment course? We're going to explore four big ideas throughout the course. Uh, we'll relate them to both being a physical education teacher and a coach or somewhere as a professional in the wellness field. But we'll uh, start off by uh, explaining the ideas through the lens of a teacher or coach. Number one, the PE teacher or coach must use pedagogical assessments to evaluate effective teaching and coaching. The next big idea is the teacher or coach will use professional standards to guide effective assessment. Number three, the PE teacher and coach must decide or be able to create assessments to effective to assess effective instructional lessons and practices. And number four, the PE teacher and or coach must be able to create long-term assessments to uh, be able to evaluate effective programs. All right, now on to the syllabus review. Uh, first of all, uh, download that syllabus uh, from your uh, Canvas page. Look at the general information that has information on the class, the prerequisites, the time, the, the location. Your course overview and objectives, we'll go over here in a few minutes. Uh, that kind of goes back to the last slide, why this course, but we'll go into a little bit more of learning objectives. When you communicate with me, it's important that you set, send me an email. Uh, expect some lag time. I usually try to get to those pretty quickly. But put what course it is, because I'll have some of you in several courses. Put PEP 320. If you're talking about a specific assignment or lecture, tell me the module number, the assignment name, and then give me as specific information as you can so I can uh, respond to you uh, and make sure I get you the information you're looking for. All right. Um, so ask me a real specific question. I'll get you a specific answer. If you speak in generalizations, I might not get you back what you're looking for. All right. So communicate with me. Start by email. And then if we need to set up uh, a Zoom classroom or something of the sorts, uh, we'll, we'll do that to uh, be able to help you out. Another important part of the syllabus is the course policies and procedures. Attendance is critical in any class, but in this class, meeting in a hybrid format, the days we do meet, it's very critical that you're here. If you miss information uh, in the class, there I won't be doing uh, video makeup lectures here. I'll only do video lectures for the courses we don't do in the classroom from here on out. Uh, student conduct is important. Be a professional. Act accordingly. Uh, leave your cell phones off. Bring your notes. Uh, bring your book. Pay attention in class and respect the other students, the instructors uh, in the classroom. Uh, your assignments, uh, there's a due date, and that due date is not just, uh, hey, turn this in, get it in in a couple days. When, when there's a deadline, it's actually a deadline. You should plan to get your assignments uh, done several days before the deadline. I'm going to give you several days uh, to do each, each assignment. You should know by Monday, and most assignments for that week will probably start being on uh, Thursday. Uh, plagiarism and academic honesty is uh, critical. I do use Verisite uh, to look over your uh, assignments as well as I look at them to see if you've actually done what you're supposed to do. So in academic honesty, when you're a college student in a 300 level class, you're expected to read material, try to synthesize it or understand it, and then if you're going to answer a question based on it, you want to summarize that, and that is put it in your own words. So we don't copy and paste off of websites or Quizlet or exactly type out what was in the uh, notes, um, the presentations or the book. You need to be able to put things in your own words and do your own assignments. You're supposed to uh, learn from this class, so make sure you're doing some of those higher order thinking skills when you're turning in assignments. Uh, we'll go over the course outline here in a few minutes, but you can look at that on the syllabus. Uh, your major course assignments we'll go over. The School of Education conceptual framework and course standards are the pillars uh, for what the School of Education courses are built on and the course standards go into various professional organization standards, whether it's NASB or uh, health related standards or AQIP. Uh, that means uh, there's a standard map on there that tells you what standards will cover in this class. So we are teaching you based on professional standards that are expected that you understand. Uh, the recommended readings and recommended websites, 
that'd be a good place to go whenever you're doing some assignments for some background material. Well, there's a lot of other information on the syllabus, including various Lincoln University policies. One I'll discuss briefly is accommodation requests. If you have an accommodation letter or need accommodations for this course, it's your responsibility to let me know immediately. Either email me the letter or bring me the letter. Uh, have a discussion with me. If you don't let me know, uh, I don't know due to uh, FERPA and other guidelines. You're the one that has to provide me with that accommodation request. Please do that immediately so we can start out the semester uh, getting you those accommodations. Uh, course assistance, various policies, emergency procedures, and the student code of conduct are also listed on the syllabus. You're responsible to read and understand that material. So what are our course learning objectives? There are three of them, and uh, that's basically what the course is built on. At the end of the course, we want you to be able to do these things. That would be, number one, demonstrate an understanding of pedagogical assessments through the creation of written and performance criteria. That means basically, how are you going to assess uh, if students know what you are trying to get them to know? Uh, that might be through written or performance-based assessments, and we'll go over all of that information throughout the course. Next, number two, analyze both written and performance assessment through the development of rubrics. So we will teach you how to build a variety of rubrics and uh, assessment strategies, uh, um, whether it's a holistic rubric or a criteria-based rubric, a point scoring system or a checklist. We'll teach you how to have the scoring uh, instruments to be able to actually assess either written or performance-based uh, uh, activities. Number three, we'll demonstrate your ability to develop various prescriptions for improvement strategies through assessments for diverse learners. How do we measure these objectives? We'll do those through our assignments, such as discussions in the classroom, discussion board assignments, journal activities, course assignments, uh, as well as some of the activities we're going to do. So number three, once you figure out and you've assessed students, you need to take that assessment, find out their weak points, and then determine how you're going to build prescriptions to help learners improve. And that might be uh, actually helping somebody improve on using a checklist uh, when they're returning from injury. What, what have they passed already? What, what have they not? Where do we need to make improvements? Now we can design, uh, you know, their their program to return to activity successfully. Next is our course outline. Uh, and here's, uh, here's the course outline. Uh, there are three units. Um, this is the answer to what are you going to learn in this class. Unit one will start off by introducing assessments in physical education and coaching. Uh, next, we'll talk briefly about the need for, for change. That is more of why do we need to actually have some performance-based assessments and assessments and criteria in physical education and health? We'll talk about continuous performance-based assessment. That means how we build upon uh, learning to improve uh, con continuously throughout the course. Unit two will be about, we'll start with developing rubrics, and the number over to the right is the chapter number, uh, a variety of different rubrics and scoring guides. We'll talk about then developing a variety of performance-based assessments. It's not just about tests and quizzes. It's going to be about uh, different performance activities, uh, portfolios, uh, interview techniques. And then we'll talk about developing culminating and progressive assessments. These are the ones that get harder throughout the time. Uh, culminating activity is something you do more at the end of the class where you tie all the learning uh, together. Uh, and then unit three. Uh, we'll talk about how do you actually assess fitness and physical activity. So we'll look more on, on uh, participation. Uh, we'll talk about grading in the physical education classroom. And then we'll have a unit outside of the textbook on assessing performance outside the classroom. This might be in your career. It might be as a coach on statistics. So we'll, we'll look at a, a variety of assessments. Uh, we'll focus on how it plays in physical education, but as we go, We'll talk about expanding that into other professional career fields. Another question most students have on the first day of class is, what do I have to do in this class? So I'll uh, go over four different kind of uh, assignment categories we're going to do, just so you have an idea of what you'll be doing throughout the class. Uh, these would be assessments because we're going to assess your learning. So we'll concentrate on some different activities focused on the development of assessments. That means we'll, we'll do things talking about the development of various performance-based assessments. That includes written tests, 
journals, presentations, open response activities, as well as various culminating and progressive assessments. So we'll do that. We'll have that intertwined within the class. We'll also talk uh, another assignment category is how do we develop and implement rubrics or scoring guides. So that might be the development of, uh, of a rubric, a scoring guide that includes a checklist, a point value checklist, a rubric, skill assessment rubrics, uh, a written activity assessment rubrics, as well as holistic rubrics. Two other major assignments. Uh, we'll do some assessment labs throughout. Uh, that is, we will work on developing different assessments that will help us understand and implement assessments in both physical education and a fitness setting. This might talk about including uh, uh, learning the sit and reach test, the shoulder stretch test uh, to assess flexibility. We might talk about the fitness gram to assess health and fitness related activities. We'll talk about using scoring guides uh, to, uh, as an anal analytic tool for sports skills. Uh, and we'll also talk about some sports medicine assessments, the fitness gram, and some professional assessments, uh, how you would get assessed on the job. And then the last one is the portfolio, and we'll go over that next. You're going to be responsible to develop a portfolio to collect artifacts related to your learning in this class. So let's go a little more specific on the portfolio. The rest of the assignments I'll explain as we go throughout the class. Uh, you're responsible to get a three-ring binder. Try to get about a one-inch one one and a half inch. Uh, get four to five tab dividers. I will give you a handout on the portfolio uh, here about the second week of class. You need to bring this to class every day. Make sure you put some notebook paper in it to take notes as well as bring a pen and your electronic device because we might use all those in the class. We're going to put this together and complete it as we move along in the class. It will be an assignment that that you turn in uh, for some points at the midterm and the final and you will use it as a professional resource. You might use this portfolio for uh, information in another class. Uh, if you're going to be a teacher, you might use it in, in, uh, in one, uh, to develop some activities. You might take some of these rubrics out and use them in another class. Uh, you might use it some of the information in an interview. Uh, as well as the artifacts will be used in your professional portfolio assignment, which uh, will send out some information throughout the semester which is either in your EDU 410 or your internship class if you're a wellness major. Uh, and it'll be the last week we meet in class. I'll give you a couple week heads up when we're going to turn this in for a grade. But you should really complete it as we move along in the class. Next, let's talk about navigating Canvas. All right? Since this is a hybrid class, most of us are pretty comfortable with Canvas uh, by now. But I wanted to just kind of show you some different things. This is a, a snip of the home page, and uh, my view might look a little bit different than yours, be that I have editing uh, preferences. Uh, if you look over at the left side, this is this menu is really critical. That's where everything's going to be. I'll send out announcements every week on what we're going to do for the week. Our, the syllabus is located right here on the left side, uh, and then our learning modules will be right here. Uh, the modules, if you go to module one, at the bottom right of the page, there's going to be a right arrow to move on to the next. So you can just read and move on to the next module page. Uh, if you need to just go directly to assignments, discussions, or quizzes, you can also do that here. So let me go ahead and I'll pull up the web page. This is what it looks like here. Um, and I, like I said, my page might look a little bit different than yours. But if you click on the module page, I want to give you a view of what that looks like. There's a start here module you should go through. It has course information, some standards, some basic information of the class. Uh, you can get the syllabus at this link, but the module one is our course introduction. And start by going to the first module page. It's going to have some basic course information. Look through that. And then at the bottom of the page, there's a next button. It happens to be off my viewer here, but click the next button and it will go to the next module page. For every module, I'll give you the module objectives. So what you're going to learn by the end of the module. Our modules might last one week. They might last several weeks, depending on uh, how we set it up. All right. And then you're going to have your activities. Activities are things that are assignments, but they might not necessarily be turned in for a grade, such as reading, watching a lecture video, downloading the syllabus, things you need to bring to class. And then the Module 1 assignments are assignments. They actually are going to have their own page where you're going to turn in something. So there might be a, a quiz. So for Module 1, you'll have a Module 1 quiz over the syllabus. You'll have a discussion board assignment where we discuss course career goals as well as do a personal introduction. 
You'll have a module one quiz, which is over terms and acronyms after you watch video number two. And then you'll have a course pretest so we can design learning. The next page, uh, I haven't, don't have it developed yet because uh, I'm working on it right now. Uh, but you will, it'll have the video lectures. So there's going to be two video lectures uh, with links attached right here that'll go to a YouTube page. When you do video lectures, it's critical that you remember you're actively watching the videos. That means watch without distractions and take notes just as if you were in a class. If you don't pay attention to the video, it's going to be really, really hard to do the assignments and you're going to miss out on learning opportunities. All right. And then after you get through the videos, that's where the different assignments are going to be attached. All right, so I'll go back to our presentation here. That is how to navigate Canvas. Next, let's talk about what a hybrid course looks like for this course. It is a blend between traditional face-to-face -face or in-class learning as well as online remote uh, learning, right? This class is scheduled on Tuesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock. Keep those times available, and I will, every Monday, let you know when we will meet that week. Uh, it's going to really just be determined by the activities we're doing for each week. All right, you all send a Canvas announcement out on Monday, uh, and I'll let you know if we'll meet in class on Tuesday or Thursday, or if either of those days will be online. All right, remember, when we don't meet in class, you need to just spend that time frame because uh, there's a time commitment to uh, hybrid learning outside of class. Uh, the one thing I can tell you right now is there will be no in-class meetings after Thanksgiving. So uh, once you go to Thanksgiving break, all the assignments uh, and modules will, will be online from that point out. Now I realize there's going to be assignments and some culminating activities. That doesn't mean class ends. That just means we won't meet anymore. Uh, in face-to-face -face settings. So when you go home for Thanksgiving, uh, if you do go home or to another location, uh, you can stay there. But uh, all of your classes with me, as well as I think campus-wide, will, will, uh, will transition to remote learning after Thanksgiving. Here are our Module 1 activities. First of all, obtain the textbook. I'll show you another picture of the textbook. Uh, the information uh, with the ISBN number is on your syllabus. You can purchase that at the LU bookstore online or borrow from somebody, but you're responsible to have the textbook for week two of the course. Make sure you get your three ring binder with tab dividers, stock some paper in it and bring it to class next Tuesday. And then download and read the syllabus. It's important that you understand what's expected of you in the class. Uh, watch the module one video lectures. Uh, they're located in the module one uh, canvas page on, on the video lectures page. Uh, this lecture was uh, similar to the one in class on Tuesday, and on Thursday, that's going to be new material. So watch part two of the module one lecture so I can uh, go over the information you're going to need to be able to do the assignments. What are your module one assignments? Uh, by Thursday, I have the dates here, module one syllabus quiz, five questions over the syllabus to make sure you reviewed it. They're basic questions. It's due Thursday at 8 p.m. Number two, you're going to do a discussion board over a personal introduction, as well as you'll discuss course and career goals. Uh, there's a three paragraph outline, follow that closely. Uh, your initial posting is gonna show up in your to-do list and it's due Thursday by 8 p.m. Now you also have to respond to two classmates by Friday at 8 p.m., but it won't show up back in your to-do list. You're gonna have to remember to do that on your responses. If you have your initial posting and it pops up and you see two other people on Thursday, Go ahead and respond to them and get this assignment done. You don't have to necessarily come back on Friday. You can always be earlier than the deadline. All right, so that's how our discussion boards will work, and we'll have a few of those throughout the semester. Number three is a acronyms and terms quiz. So your module one terms and acronyms quiz that I will go over in part two of the video lecture uh, will be due Friday by 8 p.m. And then you will take a course pretest, and it's due Sunday by 8. All right, most of our assignments are going to be 8 p.m. They'll be 8 p.m. unless otherwise noted. Uh, on your course pretest, you're not expected to know everything. Uh, you're expected to earn some points, and if you get it done on time, I'll provide 10 bonus points. So if you uh, score less than five or six points, you're probably not prepared to be successful in this class. You don't have the background knowledge. We need to, to talk about it. I'll go over why we do a course pretest. We also have a course post test. Uh, in the next part of the video lecture series. 
So here's our class meeting schedule uh, for this week and next week, just so you know. Thursday, we will not have an in-class meeting. We will have a virtual day. That means by Thursday, you need to watch the video lecture and complete all the Module 1 assignments. Uh, some of them are due Friday and Sunday, but you can go ahead and do them Thursday during class time. Next Tuesday, we will meet in class once again. Uh, we will have a lecture and some activities. And the following Thursday will be another virtual day. So for the first two weeks, we will have classes on Tuesday in person, and we will have virtual or online courses on Thursday. All right? Make sure you watch the video lecture and complete your Module 2 assignments uh, next week as well. So we'll close class today by reminding you that the textbook is required for success in this course. It's available at the Lincoln Bookstore. Here's the textbook information. The title is Performance-Based Assessment for Middle and High School Physical Education, the third edition. Don't get the second edition. It's completely different. You need the third edition. It's by uh, Lund and Kirk. Uh, it, was, it, it came out in 2019, even though it's a 2020 uh, publishing date. And Human Kinetics does offer e-text online through their website at humankinetics.com, but you have to purchase those. All right, so here is the actual textbook cover. Uh, make sure you obtain the textbook, uh, and good luck in the course. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, we can either discuss this in person, uh, or we can set up a Zoom meeting or talk on the telephone. Uh, but make sure uh, you pay close attention to the course syllabus, and uh, you check your announcements and check into Canvas every Monday so you understand what we're going to do for the week. All right, good luck. Uh, you'll, we'll have a great semester, and you're going to learn a variety of assessment strategies that you had no idea were even out there. Have a great day, and uh, we will see you next Tuesday.